And today, the winner of Telethon and Seven West Media's Dancing Together Challenge was revealed. But there was a heartwarming twist when I knocked on the door to congratulate the Labor family this morning. But one entry stood out from all the others. This Beetlejuice-inspired routine from the Laver family. And the winning family is the Lavers. Meet the Laver family from Perth. Mum, Dad and kids are champion dancers. And with this sunrise entry, they hope their video brings everyone the same positive vibes they had. Selamat siang So thank you banget buat kalian yang sudah uh, nonton video kita kemarin Dan hari ini ya kita uh, episode baru dan aku punya tamu yang sangat spesial sekali Mereka ini jauh-jauh uh, dari Perth, Australia And let me introduce you guys uh, Good afternoon to Ross and, and his wife Hi Hi Hello Ya, yeah, so uh, guys, jadi hari ini kita punya tamu uh, ada Mr. Ras dan juga istrinya. Dan for your information, mereka ini adalah orang-orang hebat yang uh, sekarang hidup dan tinggal di uh, Australia. Uh, dan Ras ini sebenarnya adalah salah seorang um, keturunan dari uh, Gorontalo. Ibunya adalah seorang uh, Gorontalis ya. Jadi uh, kita akan tanya-tanya lebih lanjut nih gimana soal uh, karirnya dia. Oh ya, dan mereka ini baru saja memenangkan uh, Australian Family Squad. Wow. So make sure kalian nonton sampai selesai, oke? Okay? Alright. So <laughs> uh, good afternoon, uh, Ras and Thief. Yes. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. Very, Very good. good. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So I mean, uh, you know, it's such an honor for me to interview you and your family because I mean, like, you guys are amazing and extraordinary. So honor for us to to be here. I got some information about you that you were born and grew up in Australia, but uh, your mother is originally from Gorontalo. Yes, she it's is. Be surprised. Actually, and also most of your family are living here. So, uh, I mean, like, have you ever come to Indonesia, uh, particularly in Gorontalo? I came to Gorontalo when I was a baby. Kecil. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, maybe one one years old. Uh, but uh, I'm not remember. But I'm, I'm many times to Jakarta and many times to Bali. Oh, so you ever come to visit Bali? Yeah, all the time in Bali. Uh, maybe uh, three times for one year. Um, <clears throat> but obviously not now because of Corona. Because you ever come to Indonesia, what do you miss the most about Indonesia? Number one is the food. Right. Number two is the culture. <laughs> Number three is the massage. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Actually, when they told me that you're gonna be my guest uh, today, uh, I right away look up uh, for your Instagram account to get to know you more. And I saw that your feed is full of dancing of yours and your family as well. So I was wondering, like, since when did you start dancing and where did you learn it? So for me, we'll start with me and then we'll go to Viv. So for me, I uh, it, it start it actually started with martial arts. So uh, Mama put from when we were baby to martial arts, karate, a uh, little bit silat, and okay. we then maybe as a teenager, uh, 14, 15 years old. We starting uh, the dancing, which is the break dancing or b boy, and uh, and then yeah. So what was I fourteen? That's nineteen ninety six. So that is twenty five years. 
Yeah, 24 years. Wow. Uh, um, so my parents uh, used to own a gymnastics school in Australia, in Perth. So I started gymnastics uh, when I was dua tahun. Um, and then from then I taught myself to dance. My sister and me taught myself ourselves to dance. Um, and then we moved to Bali when I was 14. Um, and we opened a gymnastics school in Bali when I was 14. And then I came back to Perth when I was about 19. Um, and then was dancing here in Perth, um, doing hip hop, acrobatics. Um, and then I met Raz when I was about 22. And that's when I started breaking or break dance. Wow, that's really impressive. Okay, uh, so um, I also found an uh, interesting fact from your uh, feed where your family can dance as well. I mean, it's not only you and your wife, but your children, they're also really good at dancing. But um, <laughs> I, I have a question, like, um, you, because uh, Fifth also is a dancer, so is that, what you, uh, is that what makes you fall in love with her? <laughs> okay, let me tell you this story. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Are you going to tell the true version or your version? So many years ago, maybe, uh, how many years? Maybe uh, Lima Blas Tuan, like years Tahun. ago. Tahun, Tuan, Lalu. Tahun, Malu. Lalu. 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 <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the, my, my group, my dancing group, uh, it's me and three brothers and uh, some three friends. We... Uh, were very popular back then um, and we did doing lots and Viv just followed me everywhere no 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 that's not how it went <laughs> no but yes we did uh, one day I met her and I seen that she can do uh, f gymnastics flips like uh, some acrobatics and I asked her if she wanted to learn how to dance uh, break dance and she said yes, so we start dancing together first, uh, maybe for three, four months, dancing together, practice, practice. And then one day, um, she's looking in my eyes and she's, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's close enough to the truth. Yeah, yeah <laughs> something like that. So it's like love line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you, you, you guys are like met every day. So, yeah, you get, you get used to it, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's romantic, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess. And, and how about you, Fifth? I mean, what is your first impression when you see Raz? <laughs> that was too confident. He was walking like this. Start again because that camera didn't turn off. So the very first time I met him, I thought he was too confident. He was walking around with a backpack. And I said to my cousin who I was with, I said, who's that? Why is he walking like this, like this? And then after the second time I saw him, um, they were dancing and I said, I can do that. So I did a few moves and then he asked me, do you want to learn? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, the first impression was just, he was a very good dancer. He was a little bit handsome, um, but I really wanted to learn and be friends. And then, yeah. And then he charmed his way into my heart. I can feel the love is in the air now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys really look good together. I'm so happy to hear that. What about your children? I mean, uh, you know, they are very young and but so energetic and they are really good at dancing. And are you the one who decided the children to dance or uh, it is their own will? Uh, it's a, a little bit of both. Like obviously because I'm a dancer, she's a dancer, they're going to get exposed to dancing. Um, and then it's, it was half their choice whether they wanted to do it. So for instance, if they wanted to do soccer, we would, we would, we would let them do soccer or if they wanted to do basketball, we'd let them do basketball, but they probably still have to dance as well. But, uh, Vivica, which is the older one, she loves dancing so she she does uh she dances she would dance even if 
we didn't dance, I think. Rosaya, the younger one, she's, um, she's, I don't know how to explain her. She's, uh, so Vivica loves dancing and she loves to learn all the technical sides of dancing to become very good. Rosaya loves dancing more for just to express herself. She's not as interested in the technical side, but she just likes the freedom of yes. the dance. She doesn't like to learn <laughs> if you try to teach her. She likes sukha balaja. Yeah, yeah. But loves uh, <laughs> dancing for feeling. But they also, they learn other places as well from other teachers. We mainly teach them the break dance, the hip hop, and the acrobatics, the flipping. And then the other styles of dance, they... So ballet and tap dance, Vivica learns at another studio. Oh, so they can do ballet as well? Yes. Uh, ballet, wow. tap, jazz, everything. I thought, you know, I thought at the first they just can do like uh, freestyle or something. Wow. No doubt, the mom and dad is a dancer too. So it's like, it's on their blood. Another cool thing that I know uh, about your family is you guys are on a production house uh, there and it calls Production S, right? Uh, S. S Productions, yes. Oh, S Production, okay. And then, uh, I mean like, uh, Australia has a strong economy and uh, it's no exception. And based on what I read, uh, as the capital city of Western Australia, Perth also is the, one of the busiest city in Australia. And many people there, they run a business such as a tourism business and uh, restaurants. And I also uh, found that Australia is one of the countries with the uh, highest minimum wage standards in the world. It's like around uh, 740 uh, Australian dollars or around 7.5 million uh, rupees every week for uh, full-time workers. So the thing that makes me, um, what is that, a wonder, uh, so how did you start your production house business? And what are the struggles uh, you have faced at the beginning? Okay, yeah, no worries. So. Um uh, to to go on all the research that you did on Google on Australia, yeah, you're pretty correct. Um, Australia is a very uh, a good country to live. Um, I'm super grateful because uh, you know I know some of the financial struggles that people have in Indonesia, uh, and I was lucky enough to be born in Australia with a with a different type of opportunity. Before I go on and answer this question, I just want to say sorry to the viewers because I know I look full on Indonesian, but I just don't speak it and I'm a little bit embarrassed about that, but um, I will eventually learn. Yeah. So um, the the business, so my business, um, so the, I'll talk about the skill first. So the skill of learning to create videos and um and you know, using cameras and things like that came from dancing. So when we were dancing before, when I was younger, we would f film each other uh, dancing and we'd make small videos, cool little videos, um, because me and my brothers also do music. So we, uh, we make music and we used to film each other doing music and it sort of progressed it was, I think it was maybe 2013, I decided, uh, because I was working in mining then, I decided I wanted to do something that I, uh, that I enjoyed uh, for work. So I decided to, um, to start, uh, well, to build a production company where, where I create videos for businesses. And... Um, yeah, so I bought some cameras and I ju we just started um, to talk about challenges we faced. Um, we yes. never ever had an issue with being uh, creative. So if there was a job that needed to be done and they needed creative, they needed an idea or they needed a concept, um, that was never an issue because that was what we specialized in. Um, where the challenges that we had was in how do we create a healthy business, a business, how do we get more clients? 
How do we uh, create a business that makes more money? Um, and these things have nothing to do with creative. It's just got everything to do with business management, uh, sales, things that we weren't quite used to. So um, that was our main challenge that we had in the first uh, two years. Um, but then, you know, over two years and even up until today, it's been seven years, I'm still learning the art or the process of selling. Um, and yeah, so that, that would have been the biggest challenge, learning how to sell and learning how to specifically sell uh, video products. Um, but, <clears throat> I, you know, uh, I focused on it, I learned it and, and now I can sell um, video products. No, yeah, I think that was pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, and now, and today, yeah, so that's what we do. Um, I do a lot of work for uh, different businesses around Perth, some big, some small. Um, I And in the spare time, I use uh, my skills in production to do the stuff with the labors and the kids and the dancing stuff that we do with the kids. All right. Wow, that's it's really inspiring us. And it... Uh, you know, after you told me uh, the struggles itself, um, and what makes you stronger? Like, what makes you strong to face all that struggles? Maybe um, something that uh, makes you uh, feel like I should go on with this business, even though I have uh, so many uh, obstacles that I need to face. Yeah, um, that's it's it's kind of easy. So when we grew up from young. Uh, because mama came to Australia and she didn't speak English, she didn't have a uh, qualification. So when we grew up, we grew up very um, poor. So we didn't have much money and we, uh, and we struggled a lot uh, when we were younger. But um, the, the lack of money that we had growing up... Um, I didn't notice it because we were very, very rich in love uh, from our mother. Um, so when it when it comes to challenges like challenges in business, challenges in life, um, I feel like everything that we went through as children, with regards to struggling, that was all training and preparation for us to learn how to handle, uh, you know, challenging situations and how to, how to be strong in the face of uh, adversity. So um, as much as I don't like some of the challenges, you know, like uh, when, when things are not going well, a part of me loves it because it, uh, you know, because I know that there it, I'll get through the other end, right? And when you do get through the other end, the feeling is usually a, a feeling of greatness. So um, I, I believe that what gets you through, and this is for your viewers as well, I believe what gets you through the hard times is understanding that it's only hard for so, for so long. It's just a process. So just like good things, uh, good things and bad things happen and they only happen for a short amount of time. So they'll, they'll come and they'll go. So when the good things are there, when things are going well, it only lasts so long and then it'll pass. Right? And same with the bad things. When the bad things come, you just got to understand that what, they're only there for a period of time and then they're gone. And if you can uh, uh, process that, then you'll understand that all you have to do, it, it, you know, you don't have to be strong forever you just need to be strong for the uh, for a uh, certain amount of time and if you it, yeah and w once you actually understand that you'll be able to think more clearer uh when times do get tough well i i learned so much thing from you guys and i hope uh, our viewers can get the point as well because i mean like it's really inspiring uh from your story. Uh, I know, I mean, like in Australia, there may be a lot of uh, production houses, but what makes uh, your uh, production is unique uh, compared to other production houses there? Because I'm Indonesian. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. All right. 
No, no, no. I think, I think. I think, I think. What do you think? From an outside perspective, I would say um, not, not just the quality of finish and not just because he can take somebody's idea in their head and bring it to a visual video. Um, I think more than anything in Raz's case, it's his ability to build relationships with people. So his customers aren't just a customer that gives money and he gives something and then see, Baba, you know, thank you very much. It's not like that. He builds a very good, strong relationship. He's very authentic um, and that, that comes through his work. And so customers really appreciate that and that becomes infectious and brings more work and brings repeat work. So I think that's why it makes him stand out a little bit. Yeah. I don't know what he thinks though. What do you uh, think? Yeah, I think sort of the same. Um, if... I'm trying to answer these questions in the best way that will uh, help your viewers in their journey. So, um, and I get that question a lot from people in Perth. How do, how do I separate myself from uh, the rest of the pack? Um, now, in any industry that you go into, there's always going to be competition, okay? But yes, in, sure. in every industry that you go into, there's always enough work for everybody to work. Now, it's, it's a given. Some people focus too much on having the best equipment and having the best skills and uh, you know having the best computer or having the best this and the best that. Um, none of that matters if you cannot get the clients. All right, so you need, uh, so for me, I value connection with people. So when I, uh, when I build a relationship with someone, I, um, I build a strong connection with them and I value that. Um, and as a result, I already know that I can do uh, uh, good videos, but I also know that there's a lot of uh, competition out there that can create the same quality video. Some of them can create better, but the thing that I do believe I focus on that, that a, lot of, a lot of them don't is yeah building a relationship with the client and understanding that when you create it, uh, when you're creating or when you're delivering a product or a service to a client that it needs to serve a purpose for them so in the if there's people in Gorontalo that want to get into production you need to remember that even though you have the skills and you have the knowledge for video production that Yes. You need to make sure that the video that you create serves a purpose for the customer. Um, if it doesn't serve a purpose for the customer, then your video is useless or your product is useless or your service is useless. Um, and when you understand that, your business will, will, um, will what's the word I'm looking for? Your business will blow up. Yeah, it'll blow up when, uh, when you understand that. So, um, yeah, uh, that's what I tell everybody in Perth that asks me that question. Um, a lot of the time when you're working with big uh, clients and people that pay a lot of money, you will find that the, the job that you uh, deliver to them doesn't even um, utilize uh, all of your creative capacity. It, it maybe only utilizes 70%, but that 70% is exactly what they need you know so um, it's it's hard to explain I wish I could speak Indonesian because I'd explain this in detail but I can't <laughs> yeah and maybe additional thing that both of you has a good personality I guess so that's also uh, helps you to you know to to get the customer and the clients as well because you treat them not only like uh, a clients or customer but more like more like friends or family so do you feel comfortable with that wow i think people in indonesia should should learn this it's um yeah. it's a it's it's definitely um you know because we obviously we have the business in bali as well but it's not production we have uh many villas in bali uh and viv runs that business so uh and all of our staff are uh, Balinese staff, and I'll let you talk about that one and how um, your personality can actually 
help influence empower, yeah influence yeah so when i think when you speak about personality and how that can influence how well your business goes it it makes a lot of difference so with our villas in bali um in terms of not just doing well and getting lots of customers having an honest and authentic personality and being your true self uh, when dealing with your staff when you make them feel valued and respected and make them feel like your family they perform at a much higher level as well and they in turn will treat the customers as well the same way so um, our staff um, have been with us for seven years in Bali and we haven't had really a change of staff which is in Bali it's quite difficult but we've managed to do that um, and I think that's got a big big uh, a big reason behind that is because of that um, and then obviously the flow on effect is then how you deal with potential clients coming to stay at the villa it's the same process you you're true you're authentic you're you show your personality you show that they're valuable um and then when your staff are doing the same for the guests then the guests will tell the guests when you get a good customer that's happy that they will tell many people and those people will tell people and it's just that flow on effect if I can ask you uh, this or not. So talking about the current condition, we all know that uh, the COVID-19 just hit many countries. And I mean, like Australia also includes. So how do you how do you sustain your business, especially during the COVID-19? OK, so um, luckily for us in Australia and in Perth in particular, we are the safest city on the earth so uh we've got zero cases of corona in in perth um, community transmission and we've uh and we've got no community transmission and uh perth is actually thriving or it's booming okay so my business in production didn't get hit very hard or at all by corona However, our business in Bali, uh, the, the villa business, that took a 100% hit. So it went from booming, like going very, very well, to instant stoppage, right? Meaning that, yes. uh, but we still pay the staff uh, because they also have to eat and they also have, even though we're not making money from that business, um, we do understand that our our staff are like our family. Um, they they look after us. We look after them. So during this pandemic, we while we can, uh, we'll try and continue to pay them for as long as we can until we start struggling and we're unable to do so anymore. Um, but hopefully, we can uh, sustain until the end of the virus. Um, but to talk about uh, that particular challenge, so a, a, a business that's went from going really, really well to stopping instantly uh, because of a virus. Now in Indonesia, you would have felt that very, very hard. So everyone in Bali felt that hard. I'm sure in Jakarta and Gorontalo, you're feeling the, um, the pinch very hard. Um, the only thing that I could uh, say to everybody with regards to how we handle it, but how I think everyone as humans should uh, handle this situation is to focus on two things. Okay, the first one is gratitude. Okay, if you can focus on gratitude, the things that, you, that you're grateful for, that we have clean air, that we breathe, yes. that we have family, that we have love, that we have support, and that we live in uh, in a place where we can grow our own fruit and vegetables and stuff like that. So be being grateful is the first thing. Number two was perspective. Now, even if there wasn't a pandemic or there was no coronavirus, everybody should exercise these two things, gratitude yes. and perspective, okay? And um, so the perspective of, you know, a lot of people uh, had, they lost their jobs with Corona. A lot of people had their businesses shut down. A lot of people, um, you know, maybe lost family members. So there's a, there's a lot of things negative that happened. Um, but 
in these really tough times, that's when you've got to pull on uh, gratitude and perspective, meaning you've got to look at the things that you do have. Now, it, at a time like this with a world crisis like Corona or like COVID-19, a place like Indonesia is a place that I believe should thrive because there, you know, you grow your own rice. It's it's embedded in the yeah. our culture of in, uh, our Indonesian culture that to we be resourceful. yeah to be resourceful. You 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 grow your own food. We cook. It, it's part of our culture to cook. Um, it's part of our culture to, you know, when we go to Indonesia and we learn that. Well, I, I didn't learn this from Indonesia. I just learned this from a young age. But, you know, some families can live on, you know, uh, like, I don't know, $100 a month or something like that, or, or even less sometimes. That's what we call being resourceful. Um, and if... Coming together, helping each other. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing, you know, helping each other. In, in places like Australia, um, I don't want to... Yeah. I don't want to say bad stuff about Australia, but a lot of people uh, uh, complain when things like pandemic has happened. They don't look at the at the at the good stuff. They just look at the bad stuff. And when you look at the bad stuff, everything Gross. becomes bad. Mm. You know, if you're only yes. looking at the bad yes. stuff, everything becomes bad. But um, the the key to it all is when things are bad. To try your hardest to think about the good things. I help my our staff. We help our staff in Bali, like by pay, uh, still continuing to pay their salary. Um, but they also help me with uh, perspective, because I look at the the very little money, the very little things that they have, and I look at also how happy they are. So those two things. So I have in Australia, I have uh, maybe ten, twenty a hundred times more things than what they do. Um, mm -hmm. and But for whatever reason, sometimes I'm still stressed. So uh, my staff, if, although I'm helping, we are helping them, they help me especially with perspective because I look at the things that they have and I look at, um, at how happy they are on a day-to-day -day and it makes me think, okay, cool. I mean, I don't know too much about the people of Indonesia or Gorontalo. I only go from what I see in my mother and my aunties and stuff like that. And I feel like, and maybe you can correct me, but I feel like in Indonesia as well, um, they some when, when there's something that's dramatic, they often like to make it bigger by <laughs> thinking about uh, the issue bigger than what it is. Is that true? Yeah. So, like, for yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, we cannot control the media social as well. Yeah. yeah. Give a big impact. Yeah. It does. And another thing, don't listen to everything that you see on social media. Social media and yes. all media is just there to tell you a certain story to make you feel feel a certain way. But um, you know, because in Australia, they talk about. Bali, the media talks about Bali and Indonesia all the time like it's bad. Wow. Like there's this there and there's terrorists there and there's like disease and all this stuff, all this bad stuff and you can get this and that from if you go to <laughs> Bali. That's what, the, that's what the Australian media does here. Yet you go to Bali, you go to Indonesia and none of that's happening. It, none of what they say is happening. Um, and that basically shows that Social media, uh, mainstream media, it's all a load of So, um, if you gravitate always back to what I, those two things that I said, gratitude and perspective, you'll understand that, uh, that like I said before, um, good things will come and go as well as the same as bad things will come and go. So this uh, silly virus, corona, will eventually subside and it'll pass. Thank you. That's a really good perspective. And I really highlight some points about uh, the thing that you told me, like uh, it's being grateful during this time. And let's pray together that um, this pandemic will end soon and everything will be back to normal. So um, 
that uh, actually yeah, uh, the good thing uh, I heard during this pandemic is that your family managed to become the winner of uh, Australia's Families Got Talent. I mean, like, wow, congratulations, guys. That's that's really great. So um, I did some research uh, and found that uh, the Sunrise Australian uh, Families Got Talent competition, it aims to uh, virtually showcase Aussie's families at home, right? And then... Um, it's from dancing and singing uh, to tricks uh, with your pet. The competition is asking families to uh, get as creative as possible and uh, with the entries. And I have, I have seen your video, uh, your competition video. And it, I mean, like, it was amazing. Like, I think I know why your family uh, was the winner. You have a good concept, you know, you have a good concept. It's very organized and unique. And also the most uh, important thing that um, is you show how you interact with uh, each other uh, on that video. And also um, I get some uh, information from my uh, team that uh, you have an interest uh, in dancing, especially like modern dance and uh, like a b-boy. Uh, and as, as I know, yeah, uh, your family also won uh, Teleton 7 Perth and Channel 7 and a hashtag Dancing Together Challenge, right? Uh, yeah, and then I mean like, um, and then the last was uh, this competition, the uh, Australian Families Got Talent. That's, that's awesome. I think you, you guys deserve it. How long have you been training? for the competition? I mean, like, do you practice every day or or it's just when you uh, guys follow a competition? Okay, so I think this comes a little bit down to what Raz was saying before about uh, practicing gratitude and uh, whatnot uh, in tough times. So in Perth, we did go into a lockdown for a small period of time where we couldn't really leave the house basically almost. Um, prior to that, just in general, our family, uh, all the time, we're just playing around, mucking around, just dancing together, being silly, doing tricks. Like we just do it for fun. Um, and so then when we went into lockdown and it was, um, for some people it was very challenging, but we found it for our family, we really enjoyed spending that time together. Uh, no more rushing around, just spending time together. Um, and so the first competition that came along was the Channel 7 Dancing Together Challenge. Um, we saw it on the internet just by chance. Um, and we said, oh, well, we normally just play around together anyways. Let's actually make a video. So it was pretty much in one day we made a video and we were done. We didn't think too much oh, about so it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... Then it was a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks later, I think it was that a friend of ours sent us the Australian Families Got Talent competition online. They said, look, there's a Simon Cow is doing a competition. Do another video, do another video. And a lot of family and friends were asking us, where's the next video? And we were like not expecting it. We said, OK, so we're going to do another video. Let's make this a thing then. Um, and then so um, with the Australian Families Got Talent, uh, the entrance was due in two days time something like that so we had to come up with the concept again in a short amount of time whilst we don't have a set training regime or schedule at home where we practice together you know three nights per week or something like that we do we do train here and there together um, and then these two concepts of the videos that came up were just something that came up and we just happened to do so yeah what do you want to add to that? No, yeah, no. So, yeah, so to ask your question, so uh, um, I've been asked that question a couple of times. Um, the How long were we training to uh, create those shows for us to win those competitions? Um, there's, there's, there's two answers. There's the direct answer, which was only like one day or two days or possibly three days. But the real answer is 20 years we've been doing so it's not something that we just did uh, overnight it's something that we've been doing for a very very long time um yes. so in know if we so people are like how did you just practice that for one day we well we didn't we've been practicing that for years and years and years so uh for us to come up with something 
I would call what we did sort of simple. Um, uh, for us to come up with something like that in a day is, is quite normal. Um, and I think it would be normal for anybody that's been in in um, a certain industry or um, or been practicing a certain skill for, for 20, 20 years, yeah. if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So there you go. It was three. It took two to three days to make those shows to win those competitions, but it took twenty years of grind and hustle, and you know, it did. It just didn't just happen overnight. Yeah. Wow, that's you know that's really cool. I mean, and then um, another cool thing that uh, I like from it is that your children also were involved in that competition, and not gonna lie, they are very talented. I mean, like. Like Vivica, it's just ten years old, and Razia is five years old. How could they get involved in that competition? You know, I, I mean, like in Indonesia, it's hardly to to ask your children to join some kind of competition like this. Yeah, and I think you should manage their mood, something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we were really lucky with our kids because uh, they they came out and they were willing to do these things. But um, but uh, for for the most part, uh, I think it it was it's part of what we do under, in our house. Yes, it wasn't a shock. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a shock to their system. And um, although when we train for competition, we train uh, fairly hard. Um, but you know, when there's no competitions, we we often just do it together for the fun. So I think for the kids, it it wasn't like Raz said. It wasn't a shock of here's a competition we're going to enter and oh my God, because we always dance together, just have fun here and there. And we say to them, Let, let's make a video dancing together, something they already know they're comfortable with. It wasn't it wasn't uh, too hard for them to say, okay. Um, but when you talk about other challenges of working with kids, we, we have those challenges too, especially with Rezai. <laughs> so kids get tired, they get hungry, they get cranky. So we deal with all of that as well. So it's not always just a smooth process. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to add that too because yeah. people only see the video and they think that we have this ah oh, wonderfully perfect family. It's actually behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, if uh, one day I'll uh, release a video of what actually happens when we are practicing for a competition or for a show, um, it would be a good laugh for people. People would uh, get a good laugh out of it um, because it, that's the time that you get to see the arguments. That's the time that you get to see all the crying and all the complaining and all of that stuff but um <laughs> but but you know when we make the video and you've got the finished product it always looks good so people just think that everything is all perfect but it's not <laughs> yeah did you guys expect to be the winner yes <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now um of the first one the telethon and channel 7 competition i did um I, because I knew that the spec, uh, the spectrum of the, of the person that was going to enter that competition, I just knew they weren't going to be a family that had 20 years dance experience, that had a production company inside the family. So I knew that there was, we had uh, advantage. I had an advantage. Yeah. Um, but the Australia's family's got talent. Um, I know, I, 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 did, I wasn't sure about that one because, um, there's a lot of talented families in Australia uh, for different things. Like we we dance and do videos. Uh, you know, I know I, I know some families personally, some friends of mine that have families that can sing really well, like that can play music really well, that can do a lot of different things really really well. So I wasn't sure whether we would win the Australia's Families Got Talent one. I had my fingers crossed, and I knew that if we were going to win, that we that we we gave them the best that we had. All right. So um, after winning the competition and, you know, being broadcast on the national uh, television, have there been any changes that have been felt by you and your family? For example, when you walk around and there is uh, people come to, can I take a picture with you or something? <laughs> uh, no, not, uh, not so much yet. At, at Vivica's school, like some of the parents, like people say congratulations, but it's not, not like instant fame or anything like that. Perth's a very, it's a big place, so not everyone would have seen that. Um, so we don't have instant overnight fame. We've had a few offers of performing 
at different events. Um, so we are performing on TV for Telethon um, on the 24th of October. Um, and with the Australia's Got Talent, um, <clears throat> we will be auditioning for the live show now, um, which we don't have a date for yet. So there's some opportunities that have come up, but nothing in, I don't think, in terms of fame or anything like that. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I don't really care too much for that side of things anyways with the fame and people asking for autographs and stuff like that what i really want out of it and the reason that i do it is because of how it makes me feel and because i know i uh because what i know it can make other people feel um uh the if there was fame attached to that or you know that sort of thing i guess that could be a bonus or it could could possibly be a hindrance as well you know um but I try not to, and especially because, uh, to be honest, I'm I'm get getting a little bit old, and I I don't really want it for myself, but I do want it for my children. You know, I want them to have a platform where they can dance, they can they can make money from dancing, or they can create opportunities for themselves yeah. through dancing. So that's the uh, if if the kids wasn't weren't there, I probably wouldn't be doing it now. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, just still be yeah. teaching now <laughs> yeah and so um you know because for us to go around and, and dance and spin on our head it's much harder than what it used to be like much 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 harder than what it used to <laughs> right, be <calm> yeah <laughs> much much well yeah right, so, and then what are your plans for for the future after winning this competition okay uh mm-hmm. so um it, it sort of come as a surprise that the, the labor thing sort of came we you know we we did it we made the first video and won that comp um, and it was there wasn't a goal to move forward and and do something but then and then when we won the second comp which is the Australia's family's got talent then it became apparent that um, that it could be something that we could pursue um, the only sort of issue that or the challenge that we sort of faced with that is was how long can me myself and Viv continue to dance at that you know at that level for because our bones are getting a little bit weaker and our you know our strength is getting a bit less um, but so for me if uh, like if we continue down the path. Or, I mean, we not if, but w- when we continue down this path of the lavers and our dance, our little dance family, um, because I have background in production, uh, and that's uh, that's video production as well as stage production. Um, I'd either like to create a a show, an online show, uh, that was that either was concepted around our family or concepted around dance and uh, uh, dance education and fitness for young children. Um, And that would probably be the angle that I'd be going for, but who knows like uh, uh, what what will happen in the future. Um, We've just casted for uh, two movies. So if we end up getting, uh, getting the role or getting the part, so I casted for one for a movie about a month ago. Um, that's going to be filmed. They're looking for an Indonesian male, <laughs> and I look the part, but I don't sound the part. Um, and Vivica also audi- uh, auditioned for a movie. So if mm-hmm. that eventuates, but the future of the Lavers and the future of what we're doing, it's it's open to a lot of things, and it's actually quite exciting because um, you know whether something happens or something doesn't happen it's all just one big experience that we're going to be able to take away we're going to be able to tell well our kids are going to be able to tell their kids and um it's actually gonna for me it's just going to be something that the family name can be proud of you know so it's a like uh whether you whether you make it to the top or you become famous or you make a lot of money out of it, it doesn't really matter as long as the experience is uh, a good one and it's one that you can actually take pass down to the next generation and either you know educate them on how they can do it or it's uh it's it's always a good story you know sometimes you talk to your parents and they have a a really good story about when they were young 
this is going to be the story that will be talked about in the Labour family for generations and generations. That's more followable, I mean, like, compared to another thing. Yes, and then I can't wait for your next project. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, Fifth and, and Russ, uh, your struggle to get to uh, this point, it's uh, very inspiring and then, like, um, I really support you guys and uh, I maybe uh, there is something you want to say to those who are uh, struggling to start their career uh, in dancing out there? Uh, all right, so uh, what would I say? Okay, so th this is, it doesn't just go out to people that dance, okay? I'll start, I'll start with the people that dance. Um, if it's, it's not always an easy uh, career path to take as a dancer but um, the one thing that you need to remember is and always remember is the reason you started dancing and the reason you did it in the beginning because it's for that because uh, for, for most people it was they did it because they loved it because it made them feel good because it, it, it uh, gave them uh, it separated them from all the challenges that they had in their life for whatever reason they started dancing they need to remember that Okay, because if they choose to take dance on as a career path, it's it's a challenging one and it's a, it's it's a hard one, um, and you're going to go through a lot of challenges. So you need to always remember why you did it, um, and you need to remember that in the beginning there was no such thing as money when you were dancing. There was no such thing as a career. You did it because you loved it, and if you continue to hold on to that, it will make your the journey of becoming a professional dancer. Uh, a more pleasurable one mm -hmm. so uh, also but for people in business um, in, kind of the same thing yeah, remembering very, in, your why why do you want to yeah, do it it's very much mm -hmm. the same in um, in in business as well we, uh, I, I'm trying to make it relative to the people in Indonesia and I'm just I, I think of my, my own staff um, mm -hmm. but uh, and when I do talk, so when I when I talk to people in Australia or you know people coming up in Australia, I, I'll, I articulate it a little bit different. But in Indonesia, uh, I understand there's not as much opportunity as what there is in Australia. But what there is opportunity in in, in the coming uh, 10, 20, 30, 50 years, the world is going to become one uh, uh, one sort of multi cultural society right yes. um and i i always tell my staff this if you learn number one good english okay mm -hmm. you are going to be the connect you're going to be the connecting piece to indonesia to the rest of the world okay that's the first thing that i tell them right okay the the second so this doesn't matter what industry you're in okay and the other three things is exactly what I talked about before and what I value is if you learn these three things good communication good relationship building with people yes. right and good networking networking meaning uh, you know uh, building networks in different communities if you learn and master those skills and you don't need to go to university and you don't need to go to school and you don't need to do uh, anything to get them you just need to focus on them you will thrive in any industry. It doesn't matter whether you're in construction or whether you're in retail or whether you're in uh, marketing. Marketing doesn't matter what. What if you if you work on those three skills, right? And the last but not least, whatever you choose to do, do it hard. So if just you've always got to think, all right, I've got to work hard. If you if you were if you just no matter what job even if the job that you're doing is you hate it and it's shit work hard just work hard for as long as you need to work hard till you, till you can get out of there because I know in Indonesia there's a lot of jobs that people do that they don't necessarily want to do in a place like Bali yeah. if you're a boy and you don't have good grades in school you become a driver surfboards. And that's about it. Or you work in a bar or you do like a, a hotel. yeah, a hotel. But if you be, I always tell them, become a driver because it, a driver, you get to meet a lot of people when you pick them up and you drive them around. That's networking right there. That's building relationships. 
that's learning how to communicate. And <clears throat> some of the best drivers in Bali that are no longer driving anymore started as drivers because, uh, and they use that as their vehicle to meet people, to learn how to speak English, to build relationships and to learn how to communicate. And now some of them have got uh, big businesses. Some of them own some of the biggest sunglasses companies. Some of them own some of the biggest fashion companies. Some of them own some of the biggest hotel chains. And it's all, and once upon a time, just like many of the viewers that are watching here, they started off selling bracelets on the beach or they, they hired surfboards or they drove people. Okay, but because they, they learned three specific things, relationship building, communication, and networking, and they also had a really good work ethic, they were able to make it successful in whatever they wanted to do. So that, uh, that's, that's what, from my experience, um, what I believe, especially in Indonesia, in Indonesia um, that the, the kids need to see and hear, because oftentimes, like um, some of the most successful people in Indonesia didn't even go to school. That's a very good point. I, I you know very well. Very well. Oh, oh, um, oh, um, well, oh, well, there is uh, a there special, special request, request from, from my, team. Uh, my team. They would like, they would to, like to ask uh, to, to fifth, fifth. Could you speak, could you speak Bahasa? Bahasa? <laughs> <laughs> Saya malu. <laughs> Uh, bisa bahas Amerika. sedikit aja. Oh, sedikit aja. So, so Saya lupa like, semua. Okay. Cuz yeah, we, we were wondering like um uh you or Ras can speak bahas like yeah, not not uh, like a full uh, sentence but maybe some. So I, I I'll mention yeah, I'll mention the word in in English and then uh fifth will translate it in bahasa. No, you say it in Bahasa, and then we'll see if we understand. Yeah, we'll do that way first. Oh uh, yes, like aku cinta kamu. I love you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, how about um, suami saya Ras? My husband Ras. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Um, saya memasak di dapur. Oh. Say what? Say it again. What again? Saya memasak di dapur. No, I don't know what that is. Come on, babe. <laughs> you make me look bad. Okay, next is saya pergi ke Bali. I go to Bali. Oh. <laughs> saya mau pergi to Bali. Sekarang. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you then know sekarang. Oh, how about the last one? The last one. Sekarang saya lapar. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm I'm hungry for nasi campur. <laughs> so what you would actually find well, so is if you like when you're speaking to your team in Indonesian, uh, in Bahasa, uh, Viv can understand what you say, but it's very Some. but it's it's hard to reply. In mm. Indonesian, so uh, when even when uh, my mum and aunties mm -hmm. and my staff they speak, I can I understand what they're talking about because I understand the context words, yeah. and what they're saying, but I couldn't reply. I I, need, I actually need to practice again yeah. because I really I really really want to learn. Um, and this is actually my mum's fault, my mother, her <laughs> fault. She didn't teach me. Um, because if she had have taught me when I was a kid, when I was a baby, then I would know how to speak now. When I lived in Bali when I was 14, I could speak perfect. But I didn't go to Bali for 10 years until now. So, mm -hmm. lupa banyak. <laughs> but, you know, even though it's just like 10 years ago, but you're still good in Bahasa. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I'm so surprised, you know, you can just one <laughs> This is Rosaya. She turned six today. Hi, What's six? Happy birthday! Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. There you go. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. So thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you.
And this is uh, Vivica, the superstar. Yes, darling. These, the, the, uh, this uh, lady is from where Black Nan is from oh in gosh, Indonesia, Gorontalo. Yeah. One day you're going to get to visit. That's where they're from. We're going to take we're going to take you there one day, and you get to yeah, meet these people. Right now, what do you reckon about that? Yeah. 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 What do you, what can you tell her in Indonesian? Yes. You say good morning. Tell her to good morning. Yeah, stand up a bit so you can see. Okay. There you go. Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Selamat sore. It's sore here now. Guys, do you miss Bali? Yes. Yes. Ask her, do you miss Bali? Do you miss Bali? Do you miss Bali? No, no, do you? They're asking you, do you miss Bali? Uh, yeah. What do you miss about Bali? I love about Waterbomb. Oh, Waterbomb Park. She misses Waterbomb Park. What else do you miss? What about that? Everything. The food. Food. <laughs> the food. Well, it's 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 all good. I, I just want to say thank you so much for you and Fifth for joining us today. And you know, I I I learned a lot from your story and I hope our viewers also will get inspired with that. And yeah. Last but not least, I with my team just want to say thank you for everything. You know, you are willing to spend your time with us today. All right, no worries. Thank you for having us. All right. All okay. right. Mm. So thank you so much for you, Russ and Viv. Uh, I hope we will have a, another project together. Yeah, and then good luck for father. Yes, uh, stay healthy, stay happy. You know, you you guys are very awesome. I'm really envy actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems like you know you guys love each other, and then yeah, I'm you know I'm still single, and I can feel like love is in the air. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it 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 will be there. It um, will come. It will come, and it'll come when you're not looking for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I hope so. <laughs> I pray hard for that. <laughs> yes, so thank you so much once again for you and your wife. Have a nice day and then we'll see you later. All thank right, you. thank you. Bye. Bye.